This custom MIDI controller was built using an old RC radio, an Arduino and some spare parts I had lying around. In today's video I want to show you how I built it, the libraries I used and maybe it'll inspire you to make your own. Even something as simple as having a dial that you can twist to control a parameter and maybe OBS, maybe your mic volume, can be a huge help to actually just improving your workflow overall. Uh, stay tuned and thanks for watching. So let me show you how this controller actually works. I'm here in Voltage Modular and I can use this MIDI controller now to control different parameters of this virtual synthesizer. So we've got some performance knobs here that we can then map to this MIDI controller. So I'll just do one of them to kind of show you how that works. So I come here to MIDI Learn, I'll click on the cutoff and then I just twist one of these knobs and it's going to pick that up and map it to that dial. So when I press a key to kind of start the sequence, I can then control the cutoff with that one knob. I can then go through and set up every other knob as well. I can also pair up these different joysticks. Let's say I want to specifically control the frequency of these oscillators. So I can come here into the initial frequency, press the trimmer dial to just specifically move that one potentiometer, come over to the next one, move the other side. And now when we play, we can actually control the oscillators frequencies. Now I've shown you what it does, let's take a look inside. So you can see how that joystick kind of articulates with the different springs that bring it back to the center and then how the potentiometers on either side can be adjusted. Potentiometers, I've soldered the ground and five volts to all of them and then just taking that signal pin out, which then comes into the multiplexer which is connected to the Arduino Pro Micro that I used for this build. On this side panel, there are some more potentiometers and also a button that I can use to change between different banks on the controller. Now for the micro USB, I used a breakout so that I could have this flush mounted to the actual case. Here's a final look at the inside. There are some other bits I haven't mentioned in this video, such as the capacitive sensor, because it's not important for how this controller works. But let's close it back up, and I'm going to take you guys through some of the code. Okay, so now I've shown you what's inside this controller, I want to show you the code that's actually running on it. And I've got the sketch here that I created. Uh, we're using the MIDI controller library, which, although it's a bit old and depreciated, um, did work for the use case I was making it for. Uh, it basically helps us set up a whole bunch of definitions for things like our switches, rotary encoders, um, and also enables us to use an analog multiplexer. So your standard Arduino has about six to seven analog inputs, but with the analog multiplexer, I can connect up to 16 different inputs through just four to five pins, uh, which really enables a lot of the functionality of this controller can see our different potentiometers. They're kind of grouped in this way because these four are actually the four which are the joysticks on the controller. Other ones down here are what we've got basically dotted all around the controller. Um, joysticks, we've actually got a, a whole section here where we're actually recalibrating them or mapping them based on the travel of the potentiometers. So I basically went through and figured out where the endpoints are and then used those values to make sure that when I'm moving this joystick, it gives me the full range from zero to 1024. Lastly, I basically just put MIDI controller refresh in the void loop and it does the rest. There's no need to worry about the MIDI communications or all this other stuff. It's a pretty good library. Now, something I didn't realize till pretty recently actually is that there's this keywords.txt file outlines all the different definitions of a MIDI control signal. 
Uh, so everything, your balance to pan, um, and that basically is what enabled me to write this code. The last thing I want to end with is the fact that this library has now been updated to the control surface library, which provides new functionality, the ability to do MIDI inputs and a whole range of other stuff. And I think in a future video, I'm going to go through and update this controller. Uh, but for now, if you are building your own, I'd suggest starting with the control surface library and going from there. Thank you for sitting through this little bit of code with me. Uh, I mean, in the future, AI will be programming it all anyway, but it's good to understand what the AI is actually doing when the AI doesn't do it right. Um, that that kind of brings us to the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed this and I hope it helps. I hope it inspires you maybe. We'll see. Uh, let me know down in the comments if it does. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one, which will hopefully be soon. Bye. As time goes on, there's going to be more and more stuff that just keeps getting thrown out. Uh, whereas we can turn them into custom controllers, custom boards, custom literally anything that can still retain the cool style and look of something that we've had in the past. I mean, just look at that. It's fucking beautiful. The, the weird fucking angles, the cool like tones and colors. It's mostly metal. Like this whole back is metal. Um, the sides are plastic, but it's just really cool. Really, really cool.